So okay. here's what I was thinking, right? Yeah. I think anybody, I'm probably overstating things because it's what I do, Captain Hyperbole, <laughs> who has DM'd and enjoys doing it, has thought, ah, I make my own world. I've got this own, my own thing. Right? And it's become so easy, it seems, to um, put something together to have your own TTRPG mm -hmm. out there. So I was just generally thinking, if you were to come up with your own setting... It doesn't have to even be a setting, you know, your own TTRPG, which typically means a particular setting. Oh, well, you know, what would it be and and what would you put it on top of? Like I have seen Star Wars 5e, so people use the 5e mechanics and they, and they put something else on top of it. Um, basic role playing is what uh, the basic role playing system is what Call of Cthulhu and RuneQuest use, and that's the D100 base. You know, your skills have a certain percentage, to, right? So that's the mechanic. You could build anything on top of that. The one that comes to mind the most is Savage Worlds, right? Because it is basically made with that thought in mind. Now, put your setting on top of that. So if you were going to make your own TTRPG setting, what would it be, and what do you think would be the underlying core mechanics that you would use? Uh, a couple others that are out there is Powered by the Apocalypse, which I really don't know much about, but then there's uh, Caltrop, bikes. Caltrop Core, which is um, D4-based stuff. So there, there's several out there. I've even seen one where the mechanics were based on playing rock, paper, scissors. Fuck yeah. All right. <laughs> so my kind of game. Um, yeah, so if you were to make your own setting slash TTRPG game, what would it be? And have you thought about what me what uh, mechanics you would like to put it on top of? What would be the, the, the skeleton of your setting? Okay, I actually have a really good answer for this one. Well, we'll let I've you know it. whether or not it's really good. But um, So I tried to do this. I tried to make a 1v1 campaign for our oldest child. Like where she was the only player and I just kept and it was loosely based on the world of Harry Potter. So it was a like adventurers boarding school and they could take the different paths of the adventuring class. So I originally put it in 5e and that brought a lot of challenges because like how do you level up Is it per school year? But then, you're, you know, you got an 18 year old kid that's level 10 like that doesn't make any damn sense. So I think if I were to go back now, because this was like last year, although the mythos doesn't make sense. The skill-based setting of Call of Cthulhu would make more sense for what I was trying to do because the more they use a particular skill or class skill, like as in like, you know, herbology and, you know, flying and all this, like all the potions, potions dark as arts. give them their own skill lines, they could get better in them. And that way they could pursue their degree of that school or whatever. It was supposed to be like a way for like a, preteen who's going into middle school could kind of play out some of those things that they think about. And it was, a, that's what I would probably do this very kind of Harry Potter boarding school, magic school kind of thing, but overlay it over the mechanics of Call of Cthulhu without the mythos piece. So the IC role playing system. BRP. Yeah, that's what that would be. I don't know all the terminology. I'm not yeah, good with that kind of shit. I'm sorry guys. So that's what I would do. And I think it would be geared very much towards teens and preteens. Because I really I, I like that age group. Like they're fun. They have a lot of imagination. They they want to work through a lot of cool stuff. And I just I just like that kind of stuff. To be fair, going back to your statement about them being eighteen years old and level ten not making sense, the adults in Harry Potter weren't really very competent, were they? No, they were not. <laughs> For the most part. <laughs> yeah. So I guess maybe it does work. Gilderoy Lockhart. Is, did I get that name right? Yes, you did. Good job. Yeah, I just watched that movie the other night because it was on and I was yeah. doing nothing. And I didn't. Even, I was so lazy I wouldn't even change the channel. <laughs> I love those kind of nights. It's right? my favorite. Like, Whatever it is, it's good. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Two hours later, what the am I watching? <laughs> well, that's cool. Now, I really like the idea. I toyed with something very similar, right? When we all did our trip to El Paso, I know 
the youngest granddaughter who was five, five. at the time. She's been watching us play, and and she'll come up and say, "I have made a character, and and her name is, and she's a witch cleric, and yep. she'll just tell us stuff." And what amazed me was two months later, you could ask her, "What's your D and D character?" And she would tell you the same name, yep, the she's same a witch cleric class. Who's got a sister <laughs> she that she travels the this. mountains to go visit? <laughs> so I always thought, you know, if we had time during that trip and we're just sitting around the 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 Airbnb, could I so incredibly simplify the five E rules that a five year old could easily get into it and play and not feel like she was being inundated with having to learn some rules. Right. You know, I would just forget spell slots. You get these at will spells. Yeah. You can just use them whenever, however, as much as possible. Right. And then you get into all OPing, right? You know, I got to dumb down some of the or, or nerf some of these spells if I'm going to give them to them. So it, it was, yeah, it was difficult. But I think there's something there in that that niche of that younger player, teen, and maybe even a little younger to play because I think D and D is hard for them. But I think there's people out there that have figured out a way to simplify it yeah. for their own kids based on. I've just had trouble finding it. I loved at one point to be able to put out some content myself because I've been trying really hard to work on that. And I've started other you know, ideas for that. And I would like to put out some content for that. My problem is I'm mostly an idea man. Yeah. Execution. And very bad at, uh, well, let's actually write something down. Oh, that doesn't sound fun. Thinking of the ideas, that was fun. That was great. How about you, John? Have you got a setting in mind and a uh, uh, mechanics system you'd lay it on top of? Well, I know there's already a few Star Trek games out. And I think it would be really fun if you could find one that a while back there was an MMO. I think it's still out, but it's run by a Chinese company. It's fairly predatory, kind of pay to win if you get to a certain level. But the actual gameplay of it was really fun because you had ship to ship battles or you could do away team stuff and like go down to planets and investigate things or fight things or whatever it would be cool if you could have a system that could incorporate both of those and yeah. probably yeah i've seen a lot of star wars systems ttrpg but i haven't seen any star trek ttrpg i know and it's there are a little a bit different feel right and oh, yeah. star wars is much more about combat well yeah it, i'm captain uh what I call it? Hyperbole. So Yeah. It's hard to just dumb it down to Star Wars is much more about combat. Yeah. But Star Trek is much more about problem solving for the most part. Yeah, They've Star Trek's supposed to be a mission of peace. It like exploration. exploration. Whereas, you know, Star Wars is intergalactic war. Space opera. Right. So there's different connotations to those. No, that would be cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd I play. would like that. I would I'd, play. I mean, I'd have to get me a. I was watching uniform. the original 1960s Star Trek. In the 60s? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was. I don't think I really appreciated them until they were in syndication in the 70s, and I was a little bit older. It was like, this is badass. And they were on every day at four <laughs> o'clock after <laughs> school, every single day. Um, but my, my mom was real fond of them too, and she had like a 400 page nitpicker's guide to Star Trek that every episode from every season, which I only think there were two or three, it went through, it gave you the plot, and it told you things like at three minutes, 47 seconds, you can see a crew member standing in the door to the turbo lift that should have been shut. Like, just little things like right. that. And I read through that book so many times. Oh, <laughs> so cute. So interesting. What I like about it is what, as a, you know, taking the, the Star Trek universe and putting it in a TTRPG, right? You've got some built-in political conflict if you wanted to go large-scale battles, right? Uh, Romulans, uh, Klingons. Klingons right? the Borg. The Borg. That one was scary yeah. for me. Um, 
But also, you know, that whole our race is inherently evil thing, that was, they kept, they took care of that early. Right? Yeah, they did. You know, there were Klingons and Romulans working with the uh, Starfleet, and, you know, apparently, no, the answer is. And then and the Borg did it really well. You know, you get somebody away from the hive mind yeah, of the Borg. Yeah, you get Hugh and all of a sudden or 709, like, like that kind of stuff. Oh, well, this is actually a pretty reasonable person. So They elaborated on that a little more recently in the Picard series as well. Mm-hmm. Even though, like, there are some problems with the series as a whole. Like, it was kind of cool to see them sort of revisit the Borg a little bit and not in the way you might think. Yeah. But I haven't what seen the Picard thing yet. <sighs> That's problematic because, like, I would think it would have to be a skill based system. Probably be in BRP. Just don't worry about credit rating because there is gold pressed latinum, but that's not what you're going for in Starfleet. <coughs> I think that would play more into like your rank in Starfleet instead of, you know, your yeah. credit rating. You just switch it over to your rank, you know, ensign, whatever, and that gives you a certain amount of pull just because that is your rank. I think you'd have to switch it, but yeah, it would work. That would be probably mine. I, I enjoy I the shit that. out of Star Trek. I but play that. I would yeah. like to do, so, you know, harkening back to old TV shows, I don't know if you guys are too young to be aware of Quantum Leap. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. Right? Um, so Quantum Leap was always a kind of a cool show. I mean, this guy just always through some quantum time travel experiment accident, he's constantly bouncing into different people's Entity yeah. in different times, so I wouldn't do that aspect. But a, a time travelers game that'd be cool. Where uh, you know it can be very episodic. I, you know, it's something it, it has happened. You know, you need to uh, go back and fix this thing in the timeline. Yeah, or uh, you know, maybe it's. More adventurous, and it's not so uh, specific and mission based. You know, it's, it's not just, a repair job. It's, it's a, a. I'm just gonna go. Go check it out. Yeah. Well, I just wondered what the old west was like. Poof, you're in the old west, right? Yeah. Um, I would like to see what dinosaurs really look like. Poof, you're you're back there. Um, Very Marty McFly, <laughs> Back to the Future kind of shit going on. I wasn't going to say anything, but... You said Old West, and my brain went right to Back to the Future. I apologize. That's all right. So, I think... uh, So, I've watched some Netflix series. I wish I could remember the name of the one I just recently watched. um, That uh, they were coming back trying to constantly fix the timeline because of some apocalyptic-like event that happens 200 years in the future. And they're always trying to come back and, and, and fix it and... It just seemed really cool to me, and as a uh, um, as a player, it could be a lot of fun. You know, who knows what you're going up against, and you know the whole you can you can't travel through time with laser guns equipment or whatever. Poof, you're there. So you what gotta, you gonna do? We gotta find stuff. Uh, this time we better find a sword. And this time we better find a Shotgun or whatever. It'd be kind of fun, I think, because I, I yeah. like time travel shows oh, yeah. and I like that whole thing. So that's what I would You don't get to have to pick a all. theme. You can bounce all over the place and see all kinds of themes. That's yeah, super cool. Yeah, I, I think you could do it very just adventurous, you know, whatever. Whatever happens, happens. Um, or you could do it like there's some entity in the future who is assigning missions to time travelers to go back there. And do certain things um, from a from a game master standpoint. You know, you never have to get kind of bored with one setting. It's dinosaurs this week, bitches. You know, um, you could do it, but then that also adds some work to it, right? Yeah, you know? yeah. You got to know um, more about a lot stat of blocks things. of potential creatures, research on research time period, that time period, and, and whatnot. But I think I would put it on top of Savage World. 
Yeah. Just because I think using the edges and the hindrances would be uh, a good way to build out those characters. So skill based system. Um, and Savage Worlds is set up to be the foundation of any type of setting. So in this game, you could go to any setting having a foundation that right. I didn't have to build too much on top of. Right. I, I've got resources if I wanted to put y'all in the Wild West. I've got resources if I wanted to put you in space. I've got resources if I wanted to put you in the 1920s, all within the Savage World stuff now. Oh, yeah. That'd be, a, you know, purchasing a bunch of Savage World um, settings books, maybe, maybe. But there's enough uh, core powers, which is equivalent to like magic um, edges and hindrances just in the core book that you could probably play for a while, a while without ever having to get something else extra. But yeah, time travel just because, but if I'm flipping through the channels and I find a time travel movie, I'm stopping Stop. it. I just, I don't know why it's. Uh, yeah. Uh, see, Honey says that uh, when someone acts strangely, not doing the normal thing, she always wonders if they're Scott Bakula trying to fix something. <laughs> but then she says, first few ventures are scavenger hunts. That'd be a great idea. That would be idea. a really cool idea. It would. Having to find something, find a few things, that'd be fucking brilliant. Oh, yeah. I could deal with that. That'd be amazing. 